Hi folks, Foz here from Hangar 10 Airbrush Studio. So we're going to be painting this con rod to give it a stone effect as a tribute piece today. So in the airbrush I'm going to use black and white paint um, and a technique with the airbrush of crimping the hose to give it a splatter. Um, all I'm going to be doing is getting my hose, giving it a crimp, building up paint within, within the gun and then just backing off the air so that that way the paint will splatter out and won't come out uniform it will give a nice splatter so i've got black in my airbrush now like so i'm going to crimp my hose just so even when i pull the trigger down no paint will no air will come out so i'm going to keep building up the paint and then just slowly back off the air just to let a dribble of paint come out So I'm literally just keep loading the trigger, going backwards and forwards, up and down, and just slowly releasing that air, just so a dribble of air comes through, which just pushes all the excess paint that I've built up from squeezing the trigger out onto the piece. It's easy to practice away just on an old scrap of paper, just so you can get that right mechanism of backwards and forwards. And you can also use the same effect if you're doing a, a space scene or a galactic scene to, to get stars. Obviously not with, with black, but you could do that with white, which I'll be doing once I've covered the whole thing with this. So that's just backwards and forwards, up and down, and just slowly release that air. So I've worked around the whole comrade in, in black now, so I'm going to do the same with the white. So I've got my air line, just going to give it a pinch, cut that air off, and then just splatter. You literally see the, the tiny little droplets falling out the end of the airbrush, which is exactly what we want. Every now and again you might just want to release release your airline so you've got full pressure just give the brush a little clear out just so you don't build up too much excess Like any effect, it's easy to get carried away with this, so we don't want to put too much on because we're still going to have some cracks and some lettering as well, and that's all going to be harder to make out if we go completely pebble dashed. Now I've finished going round in black and white and you can see that effect. So that's a good solid base now so I can start to add some highlights, some low lights, a few cracks just to really make it look like a weathered piece of, of stone. 
and we're going to start working on some lettering on it just as a final little touch. Okay, so I'm going to put a couple of cracks over the com rod now. What I'm going to do, if I take the end of my airbrush off, so I can't see the needle coming out, you can get a much finer finer line than, than with the cap on. Just make sure you remember to put this back on before you put your airbrush back into its airbrush hold and, and you bend your needles, one of those things you'll only do once, I promise. So we're going to come in and go quite jaggedy and just bring a, bring a, a line down. Don't forget, put that back on before you put it in your holder. And I'm going to do exactly the same again, but with white. And I'm going to do follow the same line, but just do it slightly below. And that's going to give a bit of a highlight to try to create a bit of full depth. Need back on the airbrush. Back to my black. Now what I'm going to do is just give it a very, very slight mist just along the the top of the black line. Again, just to force that depth. Like that. So I'm now going to repeat that over the rest of the com rod. Try to make it look a bit more weathered and beaten up.